One important event that happened during these last three years in Mecca was the Prophet's marriage to Aisha and there is a lot of discussion, a lot of talk about the nature of this uh, marriage, how did it happen, how old she was. Basically, the general narration of Bukhari and Muslim is that when the Prophet was in Mecca, when Aisha was six years old, the Prophet did the aqid on her. So the Katb Iktab, right, as, as some people call it, or the Nikah, as some others call it, which is just the verbal marriage contract. The Prophet marries Aisha, but he does not move with her. Then later on, three years later, when the Prophet goes to Medina, uh, I think it was after the Battle of Badr, or in that first year of the Hijrah, the Prophet, or the second year, the Prophet then marries Aisha at age nine, meaning the marriage is now consummated. So this is the version of Bukhari and Muslim. Now unfortunately today, when you see Islamophobic clips, people talking about the Prophet, slandering him, using derogatory language, and some of you may have seen some you know, very disturbing depictions of the Prophet. You know the Prophet, he's uh, 50 years old at this time now, and a little girl is, is playing in her house with dolls and she's on a swing and they come and snatch her from her parents and they take her to the Prophet's house and really these clips have done a lot of damage to the religion of Islam. Um, just imagine someone in the West seeing that and this is you know the Prophet marrying a, a little girl at that age playing, playing with dolls for God's sake on a swing and this really has harmed the image of the Prophet. You know, initially we, we are very disturbed by these clips of course, or these claims. But honestly, let's be very honest, if we look at Muslim books, where did they get, where did they get these, these claims from? Bukhari and Muslim. These are not something they just made up, they're taken from Bukhari and Muslim. So it's very important for us to analyze this alleged marriage with Aisha at this young age to see if this is true or not because these are the actual depictions of Bukhari and Muslim, of how it even happened. I'll, I'll share with you some hadiths, you know, that we find in Bukhari and Muslim. Before we do that, just a few general observations about the age of marriage in the religion of Islam, because this is also something that has historically um, been used recently, of course, um, you know, as, as a point to attack the religion of Islam to say Islam does not respect the rights of children because you know how can you have a girl at age 9, 10, 11 getting married, that's not appropriate. So very briefly I'll make a few observations on that. First of all if we look at the society of the Prophet and we look at the world at that time, early marriage was very common, it was very very common and um, not just in Arabia, even in other parts of the world, girls would get married at a very, very young age. You know, uh, 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, that was very common. There were factors that made this common. Specifically about Arabia, one common factor was that because of the hot climate, actually girls reached puberty faster than they would in northern latitudes and by the way this is scientifically proven um, that people especially specifically girls with boys it's not that you know um, accentuated but with girls when it comes to their puberty and the age at which they reach it in hot climates when the temperature is hotter they reach puberty faster there's science behind it and I don't want to get into it but this has been scientifically confirmed so living in Arabia you can't compare a girl who's nine to someone who's living in Europe. There's a big difference when it comes to the age you know, in which they reach puberty. So that's one point. The other point to consider is that in the past, as recent as just the last century really, the average lifespan of people was much, much shorter than it is today. Today the average lifespan is what, 77, 78, life expectancy, right? Go back, you know, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, that was not the average lifespan. People had a much lower life expectancy. In fact, 
sometimes in Europe, uh, for example, if you like at the end of the 13th century, from like 1280 to year 1300, do you know what was the average lifespan in the UK? Well, it wasn't called the UK at the time, in, in Britain, in England. 31. 31. Can you imagine? If you were 31, that's it. You were waiting any minute for death. You were like somebody, a grandpa who's 80 years old these days. That was the life expectancy. So when you're living 30 years, 40 years, and you want to have a family, and you want to have children, it only made sense that girls had to marry fast, younger. Because if you're going to wait till you're 25 or 30 to get married, forget it. You're not going to have children. You're going to die a few years after that. <laughs> so th there were external factors that made societies marry at a young age. And it was very logical, it was very reasonable. I mean, if a girl would not marry at age 12, 13, 14, you know, if she wanted to see her grandkids, forget it. <laughs> you know, that was very rare for her to live that long, to see grandchildren. So really they wanted to have families. And remember another thing, what was the infant mortality rate at that time? See, these days it's very low. Um, most women who are delivering, the baby survives. Back then, you had to have three, you had to have three, four, five, six babies before one of them can actually survive. They would die when they were young. They didn't have vaccinations, they didn't have medical, you know, treatment of many conditions. So if a girl would not marry at age 11, 12, 13, she would not, she would not really have a chance of even having a child because at least four or five of them would die before she could actually have a son or daughter. So that pressed them to marry at an early age. And Islam is a practical religion. If Islam would have said, look, the age of marriage is 18, that's it, you cut off the lineage of people, you stop people from having a family, and the population would have just uh, gone extinct. That would be a violation of people's rights if you were to increase the age of, of marriage. So Islam was a practical religion. Islam said the age of marriage can start at nine, it can with the permission of the guardian. See, this is one reason that, why the permission of the guardian in Islam is mandatory. Some people today are asking, well, this is discrimination. How come a girl needs her father's permission? Look, when you're nine, 10, 11, you don't know what's good for you. You're a child, right? Even if they were more mature than maybe kids these days, but you're still a child. So you need your guardian to approve the marriage because now your father knows what's good for you and what's bad for you. What's in your interest? He will protect you from being taken advantage of, from being exploited. So Islam didn't say, oh, kids can just marry at age 9, 10, 11. No, it has to be for a valid reason and the guardian has to approve of it. The guardian says, no, this is not good for her. He's protecting her. So when we examine the age of marriage in itself, it was very reasonable. Yes, today you could argue society has changed and certain factors have, have, have changed. Okay, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is too young. But we have to look at this from a historical perspective too. But that's not what you hear in the media. All you hear, oh, this, you know, religion, it's a pedophilic religion and it's, it doesn't give any rights to children. That's not true. All religions in the past, Judaism, Christianity, all of them, they had similar, you know, ages of marriage. Maryam salam, Lady Mary, according to the Bible or Christian scriptures, she was 12 or 13 when she delivered Isa salam. According to our hadith, she was 10. Now we believe in the virgin birth, but there are Christians who believe she was married to Joseph the carpenter. Well, if she gave birth to Jesus and she was 13, when did she marry Joseph? How can nobody talks about that? And Joseph is 90. And Joseph is 90. Allah, let's give a salawat for that. <laughs> By the way, Imam Sadiq in one hadith, he gets furious and he says they have accused Maryam السلام, of being you know, with Joseph the carpenter. Of course, we don't accept any of these traditions, but they believe in it. So according to their beliefs, okay, you've got an old man with, with a little girl. Nobody talks about that. Why? You only sing out the, single out the Prophet Look at the kings of Europe. 
Look at the kings of Europe that they're so proud of, those royal kings. It was very, very common for them to marry girls at a young age. The king would be 30, his wife would be 12. Very common, very, very common. Five centuries after the prophet, King John of England actually married Isabella at age 12 or 13. So this was something very common, but you see, you see the media today is singling out the prophet. Mm-hmm. Yes. Gandhi's wife was 14 when he died. Yeah, Gandhi's wife was very young. And he was 13. He was 13. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So in any case, that's a separate discussion, but we have to be fair with these historical contexts, you know, to understand the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 